I'm back with another episode of Spray Paint Techniques. This one on doing fine and skinny lines for graffiti artists, street artists, and then I'm gonna do some stuff on the fine art side as well. Uh, the first technique I'm gonna show you is how to restrict the flow on the, on the spray paint uh, by pulling back and down on the can. And what it does is it pinches the straw on the inside of the cap and makes it spit. And what it basically does is when you're pulling back it tilts the, the, the cap backwards and then it pushes it against the edge of the, um, uh, the retainer piece on the inside. And what that does is it, not only will you, you're not pushing all the way down, so you're not getting the straight flow up and out, but it also restricts it through the cap also. So instead of, when you push all the way down, it's the, the paint goes straight up and it's going through an open hole. What you're doing is making the hole oval uh, in the cap and by pulling it back and you'll hear it spit. So what you want to do is, and it is super tricky to do, but you, you can listen to the cap, make sure you're getting the amount of pressure that you want out of it. And you want to get as close as you can to the wall. So you want to get the cap almost touching the wall or touching the wall, depending on if it's a, if it's a rough surface, you don't want it completely touching because it's going to, it's going to bounce against the wall. But on a smooth surface like this, You can make some really, really skinny lines. And then if you wanna pull them out, and you can, as you can see, you can get super skinny. And the faster you move, the skinnier the line's gonna get. But also, towards the end, you'll see they taper out. And I do this a lot when I'm doing like, like hairs on animals or uh, people or whatever. As you, you, you can go fast and longer, and it will give you a lot skinnier line what you can typically get and it is tricky and it does spit quite a bit so sometimes you have to go over the same line two three times to get it the thickness and the um, the amount of spit that you want sometimes you want that little bit of coming out uh, a little spit coming out because it actually helps the character quite a bit uh, I've learned that when you're doing especially realistic stuff there's a little bit of overspray is a great thing in the character I'm not saying don't paint paint sloppy but a little bit of overspray can actually help the character quite a bit. And the harder you push, the, the thicker the line and the more solid the line. Okay. The next technique I'm going to show you is uh, basically on, on which way to move the can to get the smallest line. Um, a lot of people don't realize that moving side to side will get you a skinny line, especially if you're close to it. But the trick is you want to go uh, parallel to the straw. So if you're going, if you want a vertical line, you want to move with the straw and turn your can with the straw. If you want it to arc or if you want it to go straight, go straight up and down parallel to the straw. So if you're going this way and you want a skinny line, the best thing to do is turn the can 90 degrees and let it follow itself. Because um, what it does is it allows you to put le less pressure on the cap and it allows you to, to have this, the spitting part of the line to follow itself. So it's not at an angle facing down and you're going away from it like if, like if you were to fade something. So, and, and you can definitely see that if you, you tilt it down, you're going to have a little bit of a fade. But if you go to the side, it will make you a skinnier line than if you're going this way. And that's as skinny as I can do that direction. Turning the can makes a huge difference in how skinny the line can be. These two techniques are specifically with can control. They're not something you're just gonna pick up a can and just do. You're gonna to have to practice and practice and practice, and you're still gonna mess it up from time to time, but it's all right. I mean, just, it's paint. You don't like it, paint over it. The type of cap that I like to use for skinny lines is the gold dots. Uh, gray dots work pretty good too. A lot of people like the gray dots because they're a little bit softer. They don't spit as much, but um, I like the gold dots to the thinnest ones, although they do spit a lot and they do clog a lot. Uh, you will burn through a lot of them if those are the ones you chose, chose to use. Um, a lot of people like the, um, the older 94 caps. Those seem to work pretty good um, for most people. Um, I don't particularly care for them because the, the, the shape of the cap 
doesn't allow you to pull back on it and restrict the flow that that way. Uh, it just restricts it by pushing it up and down and having a, a smaller end on it. So uh, I prefer these and I like the, um, and I, I pretty much just use these and the fat caps that come on the black line for most everything that I do. And the next technique I'm gonna show you is more for uh, street art people or possibly using for canvases, things like that, not necessarily for graph writers. But uh, what it is is how to restrict the paint and make a skinnier line using a piece of cardboard or tape, which you'd think would be self-explanatory, but it's really not, and I'll show you why. It's because when you're, when you're using these, what you wanna do is you don't paint on the end of it. You can, but it's gonna make a very solid, heavy line. What you wanna do is shoot about an inch away from the, the middle, and as small as you can get it and angle it about a, I don't know, about a 40 degree angle. And what it does is it allows the, um, just the overspray to travel down the, the cardboard and get to just the end of it. And if there's a very light line, you don't wanna be touching the wall because it'll leave a heavy side. One side will be uh, super clean and the other side will be like faded out. So you, the trick is you wanna get it a little bit straighter and, uh, and be a little bit away from the wall and then when you hit it, it'll, it'll give you like a little thin line. And the closer you get, you'll see the cleaner that it gets and the thinner that it gets. But you don't, you'll, you'll see by looking at this, I'm not painting on the end. I'm painting further up. And if you want to get a heavier line, you can also, if you want this line to be super clean, you come back on the other side and let it travel back the other direction. But you're always, it's always gonna be faded out unless you're like touching the wall. I guess I can show that. But then you see how it fades on one, one side, the other side's clean. That's pretty much what you're gonna get. for doing like really straight parallel lines or if something like if you're painting buildings, uh, things like that where you need to be super straight, a sign, uh, that sort of, sort of thing. The best thing to use is either a two by four or a three foot level. Levels are great because you can make everything parallel and perfectly straight up and down. And what you wanna do is put it about, uh, about two inches, two and a quarter inches away from where you wanna be at because your line's actually gonna travel here because you're gonna force the can against it and you're gonna go, you're gonna ride, actually ride this edge. And what that'll do is it'll allow you to be perfectly straight with your lines. It seems super easy, super, and, and it really is. Uh, two by fours work really good when you're doing a super long line that's, you know, eight or 10 foot long. Um, you can also pop you a chalk line, and, but the chalk line, if you're going to pop one and you're going to do a super long line, like, you know, maybe you're doing a two story building or something, you need a 45 degree angle, pop the chalk line, but pop it where the two by four is going to go or the three foot level and not where you want your can to go. That way you can set the, the, your utensil that you're using in the exact same spot every time going down the line and your line will stay perfectly straight. If you try to put it where the cans go, then you're trying to, you're guessing where the, where the, the, the two by four or the levels going, and that can cause your lines to be a little bit off. And the next technique and the final technique that I'm gonna talk about today is uh, using tape which uh, seems relatively easy, but there are some tricks to it that you may or may not realize. If you get super thin tape, you'll actually be able to bend it and uh, move it in different directions. The opposite effect happens when you get thicker tape. The thicker the tape is, the straighter the line's gonna stay for the longer uh, duration. So if you're trying to do a super long line, if you can find like the three inch, uh, three inch wide tape, it'll stay super straight for you. Uh, without, without much bending and stuff like that, which will make a really big difference if you're trying to do a border on a mural or um, something like that. Uh, also, when you're using tape uh, on the fine art side and you're doing canvases, things like that, and you have, you'll have issues with it bleeding under the tape, either due to the texture of the wall or the texture of the canvas. 
will cause the, the tape to actually, your paint to actually bleed underneath, especially with spray paint. It works the same with acrylics, but acrylics oils, they'll actually will bleed underneath the tape. The way to get that to stop doing that is you either take matte medium or gloss medium, depending on which type of paint you're using, and paint the edge of the tape. And what that'll do is the matte medium or gloss medium will, will bleed underneath the tape, but they're clear, so you don't see it. And that'll actually seal the line of the tape and allow you to paint over it without having your paint bleed through the tape. And uh, that's the final technique I'm gonna show for today.